When NASA astronauts will return to the moon in 2024, they'll need a lunar base that allows them to stay on the surface. And the astronauts may build their base using something readily available, like their urine. As part of NASA's Artemis program, the first woman and next man on the moon will be landing at the lunar south pole. It's a place with fluctuating temperatures that will require astronauts to learn how to survive and operate on the surface of another celestial body. Unfortunately, the astronauts can't just land a habitat on the lunar surface and set up their shop. Instead, they'll have to build a safe habitat to protect them from radiation, an extreme temperature ranging from negative 9 degrees Fahrenheit to negative 313 degrees Fahrenheit. Before we continue further, be sure to subscribe to the channel, that way you won't miss any of our weekly videos. Another goal of the Artemis program is for astronauts to find and use water on the moon, along with other resources beneath the surface, to allow long-term exploration. Artemis is the sustainable way of returning to the moon for good. Unlike the Apollo program, this suggests a sustained presence around the moon. Transporting materials to the moon is very expensive, flying about one pound of material from Earth to the moon can cost $10,000. This is why so many things designed for space travel are lightweight. So materials found on the moon, or those that the astronauts would already have with them, are key to a sustainable approach. Previous studies of possible building material for lunar bases relied on materials that would have to be brought to the moon. As part of a new study, researchers investigated what would happen if the dust on moon, known as regolith, was mixed with a component of human urine called urea to create a kind of concrete that can be 3D printed to build a structure fit for human habitation. To make the geopolymer concrete that will be used on the moon, the idea is to use what is there, regolith, or loose material from the moon's surface, and the water from the ice present in some areas. But the researchers wanted to limit the amount of water used, since that will be needed for the astronauts and life support systems. With this study we have seen that a waste product, such as the urine of a person who occupies the moon base, could also be used. The two main components of this body fluid are water and urea, a molecule that allows the hydrogen bonds to be broken and, therefore, reduces the thickness of many watery mixtures. The researchers decided to test if urea could be used as a plasticizer in the concrete, which can soften the mixture to make it more flexible before the concrete hardens. For the test, a material similar to regolith, developed by the European Space Agency, was combined with urea and made into cylinders using a 3D printer. Other common plasticizers, like naphthalene and polycarboxylate, were also mixed with regolith and printed in the same way for comparison. After printing, the samples were tested to see if they could handle weight loads, including one just over 2 pounds and another closer to 25 pounds. The sample cylinders made with urea and naphthalene could hold the heavy weights and retain a mostly stable shape. Both were easy to use in the 3D printer. The samples were also put through eight cycles of thawing and freezing, something they would likely experience on the moon as the temperatures shift. They withstood a peak temperature of 176 degrees Fahrenheit during the tests. Now they want to test how the samples would react in a vacuum, simulating the most severe conditions on the lunar surface, to see if compounds might evaporate or if temperature variations could cause cracking. They also want to test if the concrete could handle bombardment by meteorites and provide proper shielding from levels of high radiation and simulating actual 3D printing, as it would happen on the moon to create building blocks for human habitation. They have not yet investigated how the urea would be extracted from the urine, as they are assessing whether this would really be necessary, because its other components could also be used to form the geopolymer concrete. It has been 50 years since humans first set foot on the moon as part of the Apollo program. But as stunning of a technological and scientific achievement as Apollo was, the current Artemis lunar exploration program is perhaps even more ambitious. Not only does NASA plan to return humans to the moon for the first time in a half century, the long-term goal of Artemis is to establish a crude outpost on the lunar surface by the end of the decade. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like the video then make sure to subscribe to our channel 